Coming up next on This Week in Torrance. A local hero returns to his old stomping grounds. We'll show you what gift he was there to see. And we have your behind-the-scenes look from the grand opening of the Toyota Sports Complex. We'll fill you in on who showed up for the big celebration. Hundreds of local kids are learning CPR with the help of a popular disco song. We'll tell you the funky jam that's saving lives. Plus, if you're looking for something fun to do with your kids this spring break, we have a new business that might be the perfect place. We'll tell you what it is. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chen. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Hundreds of aftershocks continue to rattle much of the Southland following the 5.1 magnitude earthquake out of La Habra last week. The most recent and startling shake reported by the U.S. Geological Survey was an 8.2 magnitude earthquake just off the coast of Chile, prompting tsunami warnings for Chile, Peru, and Ecuador. Thanks to local organizations, when something catastrophic happens, the city will be in good hands. Reporter Jacqueline Sarkeesian attended a drill hosted by one of these organizations in Torrance to find out more. Where's my mom? When a disaster strikes, having a plan of action to keep your family safe is crucial. She's responsive for Pulses 80. Sir, the Community Emergency Response Team in Torrance held its routine earthquake drill. Coincidentally, just 12 hours after the 5.1 La Habra earthquake, the largest trembler to hit Southern California since 2008. It was ironic that it happened last night. Um, we want the, the residents to be prepared. We want the city to be prepared. Over 70 CERT members participated in a nearly two-hour drill at South High School. We did have an earthquake and some um, aftershocks last night, so we're kind of simulating that. As part of the drill, volunteers played the part of injured victims and triage tags were placed on each one so they were properly assessed. There's some victims inside, so they're having to remove them and decide how to treat them. CERT members select a commander, divide into groups, and try to evaluate the situation. Then, searching and rescuing people who need medical treatment. First of all, see what our injuries are. Try to aid them. In the event of a real disaster, CERT volunteers act as an aid to first responders until they arrive, whether that's examining the victims or helping to direct residents to safety. And technically, the fire department should, you know, or someone should be able to take them to the hospitals. But we've told them how, you know, if, the, if it's a major emergency, the fire department's not coming. In case of an emergency or disaster, every household and car should have one of these, an emergency backpack full of basic essentials to help you get through it. Most of the stuff that's important that we'll need is, is we have a bag of rubber gloves. We stash food in these things, bars, protein bars, bandages, gauze, uh, tape rolls. And with the recent 8.2 earthquake off the coast of Chile this week, it's another reminder that everyone should be prepared for any type of disaster at any time. Reporting for Torrent City Cable, I'm Jacqueline Sarkeesian. Thanks, Jacqueline. If you're interested in joining CERT and learning more about disaster preparedness, call 323-459-6462. You might not associate disco with saving lives, but local students learned they actually go hand in hand when they teamed up with Torrance Memorial Medical Center. <laughs> Kaya Mayor Middle School students use mannequins in the disco classic Staying Alive to learn hands-only CPR. The popular song coincidentally just has the right beat for administering this life-saving tactic. Along with CPR training, students were also taught how to use an automated external defibrillator and what to do in a choking emergency. I learned how to perform CPR and I learned what to do before it. And I think it'll be interesting because it can easily save a life and that is extremely helpful in any situation. There are nearly 360,000 out-of-hospital cardiac arrest cases per year in the U.S. and a 90% mortality rate for those who do not get immediate CPR. The students' training was led by the American Heart Association, Los Angeles County Fire Department, and Torrance Memorial Medical Center. Participants received a CPR Anytime kit and were asked to share what they learned with 10 family members and friends so everyone can do their part in staying alive. In a flood of last-minute sign-ups, 
Hundreds of thousands of Californians rushed to apply for health insurance, leaving some unsuccessful. And due to the website stalling repeatedly, Covered California announced the exchange would honor any attempts to sign up before the midnight deadline. Applicants have until April 15th to complete the process and choose a plan. Now, that's just one of a few ways you can still get insured without facing major penalties. The government is also offering a special extension for those who may have undergone a certain life event. Under the special circumstances listed under the Affordable Care Act, changes in jobs, marital status, becoming a parent, moving or having experienced a natural disaster, domestic abuse, or serious illness. That may give you another 60 days to enroll. And for those who qualify for Medi-Cal, they can sign up anytime through Covered California. And of course, you can also go directly to an insurance company for coverage, even though it may be more costly. Those who don't sign up for anything by April 15th face a penalty of $95 or 1% of their income, whichever is greater. By next year, penalty rises to 2% or $325 per adult or $162.50 per child. For more information, go to CoveredCaliforniaCA.com or call 800-300-1506. Families now have one more great resource to turn to in Torrance with the opening of Kids in Motion Pediatric Therapy. Located now on 21615 Hawthorne Boulevard between Torrance and Carson Street, the 6200 square foot location offers services including physical, occupational and speech language therapy to help kids reach their full potential. Now uh, offering assistance in gross motor skills, fine motor skills, social, cognitive and life skills, Kids in Motion is thrilled to be in their new space. You can get more information by going online to mykidsinmotion.com or call this number 310-371-8555. Students at Fern Elementary School should give themselves a big pat on the back for completing the Pasta for Pennies program, benefiting the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Greater Los Angeles Chapter. The students donated enough spare change to raise an impressive $1,887.26. Their donation will go towards research and patient support. Fern was among many schools to participate in the South Bay Area. People came to share their opinions about the experimental express lanes on the 110 and 10 freeways. Supporters and naysayers both came to Torrance City Hall recently in a first of a series of public meetings held in the South Bay to get feedback on the performance of this year-old express lanes. The one-year demonstration project converted an 11-mile carpool lane on the 110 freeway and 14 miles on the 10 freeway into toll lanes into a, in an effort to improve traffic flow. Now, the $290 million pilot program program requires drivers to pay an extra fee in order to take the express lane. Reports found travel time savings for toll payers averaged 30 minutes during rush hours and average speeds exceeding 45 miles per hour 90 percent of the time. So far, nearly 245,000 transponders were issued, far exceeding their goal of just 100,000. And Torrance residents have the second highest number of fast track accounts in the county. Whether you missed this event or would like to share any additional comments on the express lane program, you can email expresslane at metro.net until April 7th. Torrance police investigators are searching for a male suspect wanted in connection with two coin laundry burglaries that have been committed over the past month. The first incident occurred on February 27th during the early morning hours when a lone male adult entered Thrifty Wash at the corner of Torrance Boulevard and Portola Avenue. The suspect broke into three vending machines and removed an unknown amount of money. The second incident occurred during the early morning hours on March 3rd, 2014 when what appears to be the same suspect entered Yukon Coin Laundry on Redondo Beach Boulevard and pried open the office door and again removed an unknown amount of money from the cash register before he fled the location. The suspect in both crimes is described as a white or Hispanic male adult, 20 to 30 years of age, and was last seen wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, black pants, a dark colored baseball hat, and carrying a dark colored computer type bag with a shoulder strap. A possible vehicle seen and connected to the commercial burglaries is a black or dark colored Hyundai or Daewoo sedan. Anyone with additional information about these burglaries or suspect is encouraged to contact Torrance Police Detectives at 310-618-5571. 
A local company reached a big milestone recently. Varengo Inc., the nation's leading residential solar specialist based here in Torrance, announced hiring their 1,000th employee. Founded in 2008, Varengo has grown more than 700 percent and recently won the service industry's coveted 2013 Angie's List Super Service Award for the second year in a row. Varengo is ranked number one on the Solar Power World list of top residential solar contractors in the U.S. and was named on Inc. Magazine's list of fastest growing companies. Stella Head City Council members and local workers come together to save the production of a Navy fighter jet. Plus, a local cosmetics store celebrates an emotional reopening in the Torrance Crossroads. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. What was once just a vacant lot is now officially open for business. Anne Marie Williams tells us all about it. For Mayor Frank Scotto, the idea of a multi-use sports complex has been a goal eight years in the making. I'd have always wished to do this, but uh, until I became the mayor, of course, I didn't feel I had the ability to do it. It took a lot of flights for me to go to San Francisco, and it took a lot of meetings with a lot of people that i never met before, and uh, here we are today. The newly opened Toyota Sports Complex includes 6.2 acres of synthetic turf, sports lighting, and the ability to be configured for multiple sports. I, I gotta say that it's not only for soccer, it's gonna be used for rugby, football, cricket, um, just a number of sports, and so it's just not a soccer field. I want to make sure people understand that it's an athletic field, and uh, so we're going to utilize it for everything. Look at this, the grass, huh? Uh, no, there's no watering going on, so in a drought kind of a situation, it's good we have asphalt turf. The field's biggest contributor, Toyota Motor Sales, donated $500,000 to this $3.2 million project, earning the naming rights of the complex. When the mayor came to us and, and said, you know, that they were, they were looking for a sponsor, and it would be nice if Toyota's name was on there, and I said, I certainly agree with you. You know, when, when the situation is right, we're more than happy to step up. And so, and, and particularly Torrance being Toyota's home base, uh, it made perfect sense for us to, to have our name on this complex. Bringing businesses together, along with local sports organizations, the city hopes to offer opportunity for recreation and personal growth. It's a great part of the community. I mean, this is the, the center of the city, um, and it's, it's nice that this land can be put to use. There'll be coaches and referees and adults around that can influence the kids that use this facility as mentors, and I know it's going to reduce crime, gang activity, and it's going to be a very positive effect on the courts. In addition to bringing the community together through athletics, the Toyota Sports Complex will also generate revenue for the city. There's already teams coming in at 7 o'clock tonight to rent the field the very very first day, and we realized that would happen. And uh, we anticipate, unless we were way off the mark, but on the very, very low side, about $150,000 a year. But on the high side, it could be in excess of $300,000 a year. Mayor Scotto has been a driving force behind the Toyota Sports Complex, which broke ground in November 2013, and as of today, is officially open for business. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Anne Marie Williams. Thank you, Anne-Marie. The Toyota Sports Complex will be used for the 2014 AYSO National Games here in Torrance. For more information on how to reserve a field, please contact Community Services Info at torrentca.gov or call 310-618-2930.